this is one of the key sort of aha moments that I had when I was learning about agile things. That was like, when I first understood it, I was like, oh, wow, that finally makes sense. Um, <clears throat> why do we want to keep work in progress low? So um, let's consider the effort that you put into a ticket over time as you, uh, as your engineers work on a ticket. If you consider a single ticket here, okay, time is progressing, and here on this axis is the effort that the engineer puts into time. Well, you know, as time progresses, the effort progresses, okay? So the effort's fair to time, it's pretty linear. That's from the experience of your team, from your engineers, okay? But that's not what your customer experiences. The, when the customer is considering the value that they get out of the work that your engineer is doing, that value is delivered all at once, all at the very end. What I mean is like a 50% a complete ticket is of zero value to your customer. They haven't got their problem solved at all yet. It's kind of, I mean, if you considered a, a big project like building a house or something, let's say, a house that is half finished can't be half lived in, right? A house that's half finished can not be lived in at all. It has to get basically totally complete before you can begin living in it. And tickets are basically the same thing. All that value is delivered to the customer all at the end. And this is a key reason that we want to limit the work in progress. Uh, because obviously we're not just working at a single ticket over time. Let's consider a more regular ex experience here where uh, we're working on multiple tickets throughout a day. So it, consider that maybe this is a single day from an engineer's perspective. So an engineer is working on multiple tickets throughout the day. Their, their effort that they put into the tickets is linear throughout the day, whether they're working on a small work in progress or a large work in progress, okay? However, if they're working on a small, like one ticket as, at a time, where they, they work here on one ticket, they deliver all the value for that ticket. They work on another ticket, deliver the value, and so on through the end of the day, okay? The customers, are getting that value delivered to them pretty regularly, whether it's the same customer or different customers. But if they're working on a whole bunch of things all throughout the day, you know, just going back and forth between one thing, never really finishing up anything until the very end, then, then the value delivered to the customer looks more like this. Okay, They got no value delivered to the customer for a good part of the day until at the very end, all of a sudden they start finishing up those tickets and uh, they kind of they do sort of catch up in the end, but there's a long time throughout the day where the engineers could have sorry, the customers could have had value delivered to them, uh, but they didn't because of the way that the engineer was working. So it's a big gap there between the effort and the value delivered. Um, it's also kind of unpredictable, right? Here, when you're working on a sm on one ticket on a time, small work in progress, like the, the it's fairly predictable. The engineer's you know, delivering value throughout the day. Whereas uh, with a large work in progress, it's very unpredictable. If you're like the service delivery manager or a project manager, you, just, you don't know when they're going to be finished with any particular ticket because they're just always working on stuff. Um, they're not delivering much until the very end. So that's uh, describes, that's one way to describe some of the benefits of keeping your work in progress minimized rather than going ahead and working on all sorts of things all at once. Okay, another, here's another way to put it. So uh, this one is out of the Phoenix Project. Uh, you may have heard of that book. It's pretty well known. Um, it describes, um, it's a, uh, what, do they, what do they call it? A fable. It's like a, it's like a novel almost, but it teaches a lesson um, for the IT industry. Definitely you should pick up a copy of that if you, if you haven't read it yet. Um, it, it touches on a, a whole variety of topics having to do with efficiency and and working well. Uh, this I yanked from the back of the book there. It is a description of kind of what happens to your work as your workers get busier. So <clears throat> what this is saying here basically is um, if, you're, if your engineers are just always constantly working on stuff, like they're utilized 100%, then the time that they take to finish any particular ticket is going to be really, really high. So if you could say, like, if, if an engineer has some spare time, like they're not to always just totally flat out working on the main thing that they have to be working on, 
uh, then they're going to be able to get to any work that you throw at them. They're going to be able to get to that pretty quickly. So that that represents here, you know, the, the percentage that they are busy. You know, it's it's pretty reasonable. There's not a lot of big increase here up until like 70, 80, 90 percent of their time that they're busy. But after, you know, starting at kind of 70, 80 percent, the time that it takes for the work to get done goes up a lot. It doesn't just go up bit by bit. It actually increases substantially.